Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about the best foods for shiny, healthy hair. Just like dietary imbalances can impact our skin, they also can affect our hair. Nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants from our diet are really important in the health of the hair follicle, and they ensure hair thickness, strength, shine, and growth. Dietary deficiencies can even result in hair shedding, the medical term for which is called telogen effluvium. Speaking of dietary antioxidants, of course, I am drinking a cup of the Four Sigmatic Mushroom Coffee. I start every morning off with a cup of coffee. It's packed with antioxidants. And the Four Sigmatic Ground Mushroom Coffee is my absolute favorite. Today's video is in partnership with Four Sigmatic. I've been drinking their coffee for years now. And over the past several months, I've been really busy and their new protein powders have really been helping me a lot when I can't get in a snack or I don't have time to prepare something. They are delicious and they blend into smoothies so well. They taste amazing and they really help with keeping me focused and on task and not like worrying about uh, where my next snack is coming from. They're really satisfying. If you are new to Four Sigmatics, I highly encourage you to check out my favorites, their mushroom coffee and their new protein powders. Click the link in my description box and you can get 10% off of your first Four Sigmatic order. So definitely try them out. They are amazing and I love them. Starting out, let's just talk about biotin because I think that's what comes to everyone's mind when they're thinking about dietary factors that are important for hair. Oh, biotin, super important. It absolutely is. What is biotin? Uh, it also goes by the name vitamin H. It is a cofactor that helps various enzymes in the body do their thing, including growing long, shiny, healthy hair. In the setting of biotin deficiency, patients will present with a eczema-like rash and hair loss. Truthfully though, the studies suggest that there is no role for supplementing biotin in your diet for hair in the absence of a confirmed biotin deficiency. And you guys, biotin deficiency is super, super rare. It's actually pretty easy to get biotin from our diet and the gut microbes actually make biotin. The only time you might consider biotin deficiency is in certain rare genetic diseases and in certain diseases where there's problems with absorption and in one situation where you can actually get biotin deficiency if you are consuming large amounts of raw egg whites. That's right, raw egg whites contain something called avidin which binds to biotin and can result in biotin deficiency. <laughs> Unless you're one of these people who is consuming a ton of raw egg whites, uh, in which case I, I recommend cooking them, uh, biotin deficiency highly unlikely and there is no need to take a biotin supplement. And you can get biotin from your diet, from avocados, you can get biotin from eggs and from almonds. So there's no need to take a biotin supplement for your hair. The next dietary component that's super important for healthy hair is protein. Dietary proteins contain amino acids that have uh, sulfur in them, specifically cysteine and methionine. And that sulfur is super important for building the keratin proteins that constitute your hair. Amino acids from dietary proteins influence hair diameter, growth rate, and thickness. There are amino acids that we absolutely have to get from our diet because we do not make them ourselves. One such amino acid from dietary protein is L-lysine. L-lysine is present in the inner part of the hair root and is responsible for your hair shape and volume. Furthermore, L-lysine is critical for absorption of iron and zinc. Two other dietary factors that are really important in the health of your hair, and I'll touch on those later on. Food sources of proteins include meat, fish, poultry, uh, yogurt, milk, eggs, uh, soybeans, legumes, nuts, seeds, and don't forget 
Whole grains and vegetables and fruits also contain many of these amino acids, as well as a ton of other wonderful vitamins, antioxidants, minerals, and things that ultimately support hair health. So don't skip out on uh, whole grains and veggies as potential sources of amino acids in your diet. They contain not only those, but tons of other great compounds as well. Getting your vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, it doesn't have to be complicated and you don't have to overthink it. A really quick and easy thing that I like to do is just throw together a smoothie. And as I said at the beginning of this video, I adore the Four Sigmatic plant-based protein. My favorite flavors are the peanut butter and I've really been adoring this new sweet vanilla flavor. It's a balanced amino acid profile of five plant proteins. It blends into water or non-dairy milk really easily, very smooth and not chalky. There are no gums or fillers. It's 100% grain-free. And the best part of all the Four Sigmatic products, including their amazing ground coffee, is that there are medicinal mushrooms included in these products. The protein has seven different mushrooms. I love that you get an additional pack of antioxidants and guys it does not taste like mushrooms at all one of the things i love doing is taking one of their little protein packets on the go and just a shaker bottle and keeping it in my bag that way if i get hungry between meals i can just throw in some water and have a quick satisfying snack to stay focused energized and that's really key for immune support long term and not getting run down so definitely give Four Sigmatic a try if you have not already, and click the link in the description box to get 10% off your first order. All right, next up, let's not forget the vitamins, folate and iron. These bad boys are essential for the production of red blood cells. Red blood cells are the cells in your body that carry oxygen around, including to your scalp, where they're responsible for nourishing the hair follicle and for hair growth. Folate plays a unique role in regulating hair follicle regeneration, as well as preventing premature graying, and it regulates sebum. Sebum is important in the health of our scalp and our hair follicle. Without folate, those things are just not quite right. In addition to its role in red blood cell production, iron also is a key cofactor in the synthesis of DNA. So it's really important in cell proliferation, including hair follicle cell growth and subsequent production of the hair shaft. Ferritin is a blood test your doctor can order to check your total iron stores and a ferritin less than 40 nanograms per ml is associated quite strongly with a condition called telogen effluvium or excessive hair shedding. Dietary iron you can think of as heme iron which comes from animals and non-heme iron which comes from plants. Heme iron is a little bit easier to absorb but you can get non-heme iron sources absorbed well. Uh, iron from animal sources would be like beef, poultry, dairy products, Iron from non-heme sources include soybeans, legumes in general, pistachio nuts. I was surprised to learn that parsley leaves, dried apricots, and figs also contain some iron as well. And the plant kingdom is packed with folate. Kale, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, all good sources of folate. Speaking of non-heme iron, let's talk about vitamin C. The reason I mention that is that vitamin C actually can help increase the absorption of non-heme iron. But when it comes to the health of your hair, vitamin C is super duper important. It is an antioxidant, so it's key in reducing oxidative stress. And oxidative stress in the hair follicle and in the, throughout the scalp is associated with premature thinning of the hair, hair loss, and premature graying as well. So making sure that your diet is rich in antioxidants like vitamin C is so important. Vitamin C deficiency, it's not super common, but I have seen several cases in my career of vitamin C deficiency, specifically a condition called scurvy. And one manifestation of scurvy is these little coiled hairs. The hair starts to coil because the um, synthesis of the hair proteins is not quite right. 
and the turnover of the hair cells is impaired due to the deficiency of vitamin C. So you get these what are referred to as corkscrew hair. So ultimately, vitamin C is really important for the synthesis of your hair shaft. It also is very, very important in the synthesis of collagens that make up our skin and support the hair follicle. It's super easy to get vitamin C from your diet, and so it's very easy to get it from things like carrots, bell pepper, and fruits, uh, you know, citrus fruits, jam-packed with vitamin C. What about vitamin A? I talk about vitamin A for the skin all the time in the form of medications that are applied to the skin or taken orally to help treat acne, but vitamin A uh, is also really important for your hair. Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, meaning in order to absorb it, uh, you need, it needs to be consumed with, with some fat in order to, to adequately absorb it, but it plays a major role in the synthesis of hair proteins, as well as in the uh, production of oils in our skin and that subsequently nourish our hair. Now, because vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, it's something that our body will store and it's easy to actually overdo it on vitamin A in the form of supplements. So I don't recommend people to take vitamin A supplements unless they had been advised to by their treating physician. You know, like if you have some sort of medical issue that prohibits you from adequately absorbing fat soluble vitamins, uh, otherwise, you can actually develop hypervitaminosis A, and that is very dangerous. So even though vitamin A is so important for the health of our hair, if you have too much, uh, it can be it, it's very dangerous, and it actually leads to hair loss. Rather than chasing supplements, which can lead to dangerously elevated levels of vitamin A in the body, instead, uh, turn to fruits and vegetables, which are rich in carotenoids and dietary sources of vitamin A, rather than rather than supplement. Uh, dietary plants that have a lot of carotenoids or things that have skins that are red or yellow, like carrots, bell pepper, um, some of the same things that are rich in vitamin C are gonna be rich in carotenoids. Next up is zinc. Dietary zinc is really important for your skin. I've talked about that in several videos, but it's also really important for hair growth. Zinc is a cofactor for a variety of enzymes that are important for DNA synthesis and scavenging free radicals, all of the cellular processes that govern hair growth. Uh, a lot of these enzymes rely heavily on zinc in order to function. So dietary zinc deficiency can present with hair loss, um, as, well as, as well as rashes like on the extremities, around the mouth. Zinc deficiency will lead to suppression of hair growth and you will develop a telogen effluvium and subsequent hair loss. It'll also make your hair really thin and brittle. Dietary sources of zinc include shellfish, oysters, as well as um, soybeans and tempeh. If you follow a vegan vegetarian diet, you do need to be mindful that you are eating enough foods with zinc. And uh, that, is, that is a situation where if you're not careful, you can become zinc deficient. I caution you, however, against taking zinc supplements. I've mentioned this in other videos. There are risks with zinc supplementation if you get too much zinc. It can actually cause nausea, vomiting, and uh, too much zinc can actually impair the uh, absorption of copper and you can have a copper deficiency, which is not good for your hair at all. Copper is key in the health of your hair and skin. So I don't recommend chasing zinc supplements unless you have been told to take one by your healthcare provider for you know, a confirmed zinc deficiency. Or you know, again, if you are, if you have a pre-existing medical condition that, that interferes with your ability to adequately absorb zinc, then you know, follow their advice, of course, and take a zinc supplement. But otherwise, for otherwise healthy people, you can get this stuff from your diet, and including a well-planned vegan or vegetarian diet. The last dietary factor I'm gonna talk about for hair is omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA. These bad boys are really important for moisturizing the hair shaft, and for they have anti-inflammatory properties that are good for scalp health, hair follicle health, and subsequent hair growth. Anything that's going to be anti-inflammatory is gonna be helpful for reducing the burden of damage from free radicals that can prematurely gray the hair. Uh, so it's important that your diet includes 
EPA and DHA. Sources of this include fish, uh, algae is a vegan source of EPA and DHA. So you can take an algae supplement. You can also get these from flax seeds, walnuts. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure your diet has those those omega-3 fatty acids. Really important for shiny hair in particular. So that's all I have time to cover in today's video as far as diet and how it impacts the health of our hair. But I've really only scratched the surface, you guys. There are so many micronutrients and antioxidants that we get from our diet that really foster strong, shiny, healthy hair, a healthy scalp, and hair growth. Um, I know you guys really enjoy these videos where I talk about how diet impacts our hair and our skin and our nails. So I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you have been wanting to try Four Sigmatic, please take advantage of my discount code down below. You will not regret it if you have been on the fence about trying it. So many of you have reached out to me in the comments here and on Instagram thanking me for sharing Four Sigmatic with you guys. You started drinking that coffee and you love it as much as I do. And many of you have shared with me your smoothie recipes on Instagram and I just love seeing that. So definitely take advantage of my link down below if you've been wanting to try it. I know you're gonna love it. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.